Welcome to the second session with the topic ready-made activities for teaching the passive voice in English as a foreign language classes. My name is Czerny Kristina. I'm an English language teacher. I have the superior didactic degree and I teach at Onis for Gibo Lyceum. So before actually going to the passive voice and teaching the new material, your task is to revise all that is about the active voice tenses. So how have I done it with my students in the seventh form when we are to introduce the passive voice? So first that the students have done was to actually have projects on the tenses that we have studied. Uh, and it was present simple, present continuous, present perfect, past perfect. So all the tenses that are to be learned uh, by the time the students reach the seventh form. So the students have prepared the projects on how to use the tenses. So of course you can see here different ones that are quite nice and colorful and the task was to use uh, and uh, the rules and the exceptions and all of the uh, words that show us uh, when to use and what tense to use. So after you actually um, perform this activity, which can be done in a fun way by using projects, you introduce the students with what does it mean to have the passive voice. So, um, of course, we have um, this rule of understanding that we have the subject, uh, it is the uh, word order in a sentence in the English language, you have the subject, you have the verb, and you have the object. So um, when the subject performs the uh, action, you have the active voice, and you have here an example, the police arrested the thief. So, and we explain to the students at the moment that we have the passive voice, the subject turns into the object, and the object becomes the subject of the sentence and the action is performed on the subject. So we have the thief was arrested by the police. In this case, we have the past uh, tense of the, uh, the passive voice of the past tense. So we practice the passive voice tenses. Uh, we can also turn back to the projects and having the projects and also to have the rules and to make the understanding um, that we do not change the words that help us into understanding the test. So they stay the same. We use the same word yesterday to um, have the past simple. We use the same always or every day and usual to have the present simple. But all that we do is we change the subject and the action is performed on the subject. So here the students have had the project uh, and they uh, have here the markers, the tenses, how they are conjugated, the verbs, and different kind of examples. So we have here the students. All of them have been posted as well everywhere. So this is an understanding before uh, actually having different kind of mixed up exercises to show when to use and what to use and how. So the students also present, uh, they talk, they have examples. Uh, this is a, a group work project. So, and after everything has been explained, so we already can begin into practicing the passive voice by having different kinds of activities. So the first one we have here, it is a game. And uh, the rules are to get into teams and you will have pictures of different situations. The task is to describe the situation using the passive voice uh, in the past simple. So this is only in when we practice uh, the intro introduction of the passive voice using the tenses. It can be past simple, it can be present simple. It all depends on what you as a teacher want to practice. And if you correctly and you tell the students if they correctly describe the situation, in the allotted time you win 10 points so the winner will be the team that collects more of the points so this has been done with the students in the seventh form so you have here the picture so it can be done also in a different way uh, you can have the students um, 
to have two teams um, and have the student with uh, back to the TV, to the screen, and the other student see. So they just have to mime or they have to pronounce the words. And the student's task is to guess what um, the classmates are telling him so that or his group is telling him in order to get the 10 points. In this case, we have the sentence, the window was broken by the boy. If you want to say using uh, present simple, you can say that this boy uh, breaks windows all the time, so this window is broken by him, or if you want present perfect, has been broken by him, etc. So it is again your task, you can have the same picture, but you can use different kind of tenses in order to describe it. You can also can use, for example, the curtains um, have been set by the boy's mom, or etc. Uh, another picture like this, you can have a house and then you have two people talking. So the house was built uh, by these two men or um, uh, you can have in the negative, uh, the house um, um, wasn't built by these two men, but um, you can have the future, the house is going to be rebuilt, the house is going to be destroyed. Um, and then again, you can have different kind of structures of uh, passive voice tenses. In this case, you have another picture with two people and you can use active voice in order to describe. So you have the man is cooking pancakes, so and change them into the passive voice, the pancakes, pancakes are being uh, cooked or uh, the man uh, cooked the pancakes, the pancakes were cooked by the man and they were eaten by the woman or etc. So again, you have different kind of pictures that can be used with different tenses and practice them in the passive voice. Um, we have another picture of a woman, a girl, a lady, so whatever you want to uh, have your students use to describe this picture and you can have here the letter has been written or was written the water was drunk or is being drunk and again different kind of structures the task at the beginning was to use only the past simple tense so in this case you can say the water was drunk by the woman or the water was drunk, the letter was drunk. Again, your task is to say if you need the object to say by whom or not. Um, as a teacher, you set the rules before playing the game or you allow the students to use uh, the word, uh, the object by so that you have complete sentences. Um, in uh, uh, my case, I want to show uh, what has been done at my lesson when I um had the task to teach the passive voice so um, in this case you see a short text uh, that the students uh, had to read and uh, then to complete some tasks accordingly so the task uh, the students had was to read about the hadron collider so I would leave you about 10 seconds to read the text and to see what it is about. After the students have read the text, uh, the task as a teacher uh, you can set um, is to underline the verbs and ask the students to say if the verb is in the passive voice or if it is in the active voice. So in our case, if we start from the beginning, the Hadron Collider is the largest machine in the world. So is it is in the active voice, it is the verb to be. It was planned by over 10,000 scientists in 100 different countries was planned to have passive voice of the past simple. The science of the Hadron Collider is so complex that its purpose still isn't fully understood by most of the general public. So you have here again is that is in the present simple of the verb to be it is in the active voice isn't fully understood you have isn't understood the present simple passive voice the machine's purpose is to fire subatomic particles to it at each other is again you have in the present simple and so on so by identifying active and passive voice you can teach your students to complete the exercise and understand how it works
The next activity that the students had to do was to complete the first half of an article by writing the verb in brackets in the correct tense and passive form. Then to listen and check. So I'm going to leave you about a minute to look at the text and complete it with the possible answers. Now the students listen and they have the activity. Unit 76, exercise 1. The International Space Station, ISS, is currently being run as a joint project between five space agencies. The main structure was completed in 1998, but the idea for cooperation in space began at the end of the Cold War. An agreement for a joint space program between the USA and Russia wasn't reached until 1992, and final plans for a new space station were announced a year later. Unlike previous spaceships and satellites, the ISS was built in space while in orbit. In fact, components are still being added today. After the students have listened to the text, they can go to the next activity, which is to complete the second half of the article by underlining the active or passive form and then listen and check. I'm going to give you again about a minute to look at the task and complete the task and afterwards we're going to listen and check. This is the listening part. Unit 76, exercise 2. The ISS has become the biggest space station ever. It can even be seen from Earth with the naked eye. The space agencies carry out daily experiments on the ISS. For example, new spacecraft systems are regularly tested here. It has been continuously staffed since 2000 so it is being used as a research center to assess the long-term effects of zero gravity on the human body. The results will affect the preparations for long-term space colonization. So once the activity is checked, the students can move on to another activity. So the next activity that we are going to have using the passive voice is called the fact finder. Fact Finder is a matching and speaking activity where students 
identify sentences about facts and inventions in the present and past passive. Before class, as a teacher, you make one copy of the worksheet for each group of three and cut as indicated here, so you, as you can see in front of you. You also make another copy of the worksheet for each group and leave it intact because there are a lot of facts here and it is quite um, difficult to actually identify all of the facts. Now, uh, your task as a teacher is to explain that the students are going to receive 20 sentences, but each sentence is in two parts. The student's task is to find 20 facts by correctly matching the two parts of each sentence. Your task is to divide the students into groups of three and give one set of cards to each group. The students have to shuffle the cards and spread them out face up on the table. So just like you see here, so they are face up on the table. And you set a time of 10 minutes to find 20 facts. When they have done that, uh, you give this intact copy that you have done previously to each group so that they can check their answers. Now, the students have to pull the cards into two piles and one pile must contain the first part of each sentence and the other pile must contain the endings, so the place, the date or the person's name. And again, so you shuffle each pile of cards and spread out face down on the table because now they have to say to remember, so what they have remembered about the facts. So the students take uh, in turns to turn over one card from each pile. And if the two cards go together to make a correct fact, the students reads the sentence aloud and keeps the two cards in place again. If they don't get together, the students reads the sentence aloud, but turns into a, a negative statement. So for example, you have there, uh, the paper wasn't invented by a Spanish instrument maker. So, um, Afterwards, the students turn the two cards back over and another student in the group repeats the procedure. So the students continue in this way until all of the cards have been used and the students with the most cards at the end of the activity is the winner. So this activity is absolutely interesting and amazing for the students not only to learn the passive form but also to identify many of the cards. So let's see how it works and you actually have to put them into two piles. So you have here the second part, you have by, and we will have to see how to match the sentences so that they can be done the same by students to see how they work. You will see a lot of facts that many students would find also interesting. Okay, so you have here the still the second part. You have the first part for us to play and see how it would work. Also, it is good for the students to see because you start with a capital letter. I have also um, observed that lately the students, because of the social media, they do not, they tend not to use capital letters anymore. So it's good for us to show them how important capital letters still are. Okay, so this is the first part of the activity. The students have to put them in the correct order. So, and this is all. Okay, so now we have here different facts and our task is to see how they would work. Okay, so let's see. The first motorcycle the first motorcycle was, and to see what would be the answer to that. And you need, of course, a company. And in this case, you would have here, buy a French company in 1869. So this is the truth. Maybe the students will not know this. 
and it's okay not to know but again you can ask them to perhaps um, use the internet and identify some of the facts so this is the first sentence now the Volkswagen Beetle um, was designed and our task is so to find so it was by Ferdinand Porsche Porsche also said like this sometimes now the raincoat was invented and to see the raincoat uh, was invented by a Scotsman and Charles McIntosh okay so you have here the other parts um, next you have the ballpoint uh, ball pen ballpoint pen was invented and let's see so it was invented by Hungarian called Biro mm -hmm. okay next we have the rubber tire and to see who actually invented the rubber tire it was John Dunlop in 1888 you have the first underground railway when it was opened so when was it invented so the first underground uh, railway was opened actually in London and we have to find here in London in 1863 next the first World Cup was held in 1913. Uh, we have uh, each year 300 million flowers are grown and of course everybody knows that it is in Holland. Let's see, so mirrors were invented by the Egyptians and we have here by the Egyptians. The first guitar was made by a Spanish instrument, uh, instrument maker. Uh, the first nuclear power station, so this was in Russia in 1954. Let's see, paper, paper was invented in China. In China, okay, it was invented in China nearly 2000 years ago. So, um, if we have, yes, this one. The first modern Olympic games were played in 18, and this one we also know from our books, where we speak about the Olympic games. Uh, toothpaste was invented by the Romans, okay? So the first tape cassettes, which students don't know anymore about tape cassettes, but we can also tell them that we used to listen to that when we were little. So the first tape cassettes were designed by a Dutch company. The first pair of jeans, and this was interesting, so the first pair of jeans, and we know uh, about Levi Strauss. Pasta and ice cream were first made, and again, we have here in China. And, okay, more wine is produced in Italy than in France. And now we also, as Moldovans, we also have this one, and now we have the last one, 1869 languages are spoken in Papua New Guinea. So these are all of the facts that we have with our students and the students can also see different kind of facts that they use single every single day in their lives. So the next, what we do is that you put all of these back in a pile, all of the beginning of the sentences and the ending of a sentence and you put them with the face down already this time okay because you practiced and you already know some of the facts and you put them in two piles and the students work together and they choose for example they have the first one and more wine is produced in italy then and we already perhaps know that so where is wine produced more so then in 
and you see by Hungarian called bureau so it's not true because we what we need here is the answer to say in France so you can have maybe change the game and turn them until you find the proper answer or you just put it back in the pile and or put them aside again it's your choice what to do and then the other students takes another card and you have the Volkswagen Beetle was designed and let's choose another card that you have here by Ferdinand Porsche and we have here of course an interesting fact that it is actually true so we have this activity In fact, uh, find a game can be introduced with this picture uh, where you have here the telephone and we have the telephone was invented by Alexander Graham Bell, the dynamite was invented by Alfred Nobel, the airplanes were invented by the Wright brothers and the light bulb was invented by Thomas Edison. The next activity that we are going to have is the passive descriptions. In this enjoyable card game, students describe objects using the present passive. So before class, uh, before the class, we make one copy of the worksheet for each group of three or four students and cut as indicated. And uh, you can have different kind of um, pictures there. So we put the students into small groups of three or four and give each group a set of cards. Uh, the students are to shuffle the cards and place them face down on the desk. Before you actually give them to play, you have to prove them, to demonstrate them how to work. So you demonstrate the game by picking up one of the picture cards and showing it to the class and ask the students to make present passive sentences to describe the object. Also, you can write all of these ideas on the board and thus keeping the students focused on using the passive voice instead of the active voice. So, for example, if you picked up the picture of the dictionary, students might say it's made from paper, it's used in the classroom, it is bought by students, it is used to find the meanings of words, etc. Now, you tell the students to take it in turns and to turn over a card and describe the object to the other students in the group using the present simple. So, uh, the idea is that you must explain that when the students describe an object, they must use the word it, they, these or these as otherwise they will not be able to use the passive voice. The first student to guess the object means the card. The winner is the student with the most cards at the end of the activity. And of course, there might be some difficulties and problems, but if you think that your students may have problems describing the objects, you can write some verbs on the board to help them. So the pictures are as we have them here. For example, you can have a dictionary, a kettle, some bread, and you have here a TV. And also it can be a game here, like again, I can ask a student to come in front of the classroom with their back onto the screen. And then the students are to describe what is there on the screen to see how many words the student has guessed. For example, in the first, so it is made of paper and it is used by students to find words. It's a dictionary, so it is used to make tea. Um, it is um, made of um, plastic or um, it is uh, often used by students or teachers during the break. And again, you have to, uh, it is used for boiling water. And then the students are to get that it is a kettle. Next, uh, it is used to, um, eat, to be eaten or to, it is eaten by students. It is eaten by people. It is eaten with butter, with jam, etc. So by using, and then the students uh, have to make up as many possible sentences to describe the pictures. And this is how to play the game. You have the following pictures. You have a newspaper, a rose, a stamp, some pizza, a phone, keys, shoes, a car, a map. And again, so these are the pictures that you can have and show them. So this game is quite interesting to be used in the classroom. If you do not want to print the um, words you can uh, or the pictures, you can have them on the screen and have the game as I have just shown you.
in the next activity uh, called the present passive quiz, students complete sentences using the present passive form. Then they have to read the sentences to their partner and their partner guesses if the sentences are true or false. So the idea here is that before class, you have to make one copy of the worksheet for each pair of students and cut as indicated. So it means student A and student B. We divide the students into pairs and distribute their worksheets. Students begin by filling in the gaps in each sentence with the correct present passive form of the verb in brackets. And where they have finished, you go for the correct answers with the class. So you have here their sentences. And student A has write the correct present passive form of the verb in brackets and then read to the students. But the students don't know if it is true or false. So the first one is... Diamonds are used for drilling by dentists. 10 million bottles of Coca-Cola are drunk every day. 2,000 African elephants are killed every year. The New York Times is read uh, every day by 5 million people. Uh, the word cash is taken from the Indian word for tea. No babies are born in the Vatican City. 3,000 million flowers are grown each year in Hawaii. Less sugar is eaten in Europe and the USA now than 200 years ago. 6% 6 of the Earth's surface is covered by rainforest. A tornado is measured on the Richter scale. So this is for student A. Student B has ashtrays, uh, the most common objects which are stolen from hotels. In the world, 11,000 babies are born every hour. More oil is imported by America than any other country in the world. Wood is used by half the world's population for cooking and heating. Coca-Cola is sold only in the USA and Europe. The country in the world which is visited by the highest number of tourists is Italy. 85% of Greenland is covered by ice. English is spoken as a first language by the largest number of people in the world. Seals are caught and eaten by crocodiles and houses are heated by hot water from under the ground in Iceland. So after you have gone through all of the sentences, the students task is to start talking. So student A reads each sentence to student B and student B has to guess if each sentence is true or false. And of course, student A notes down all of student B's correct answers and then the students can swap roles. When they have finished, so students add up their partner score and the student with the most correct answers wins. At the end of this activity, we can ask the students to tell the class which facts they found surprising. So it's an activity really interesting to be done it's with a lot of facts, it's with using passive voice very naturally and uh, you practice a lot and the idea of when and how and why to use the passive voice is easy to explain. The next amazing activity is the passive perfection game. It is extremely interesting to play and to have in the classroom. So first what we do is we divide all the students into groups of three or well the students in three groups. It all depends again on what we desire and have them choose a team name and a team spokesperson. So we give to the students, uh, to each of them, about five to ten blank cards. So student one from each group writes a person, an animal on each of their cards like you have here example, my dad, George Bush, a purple spotted flying alligator. So the more words, the more difficult, the more interesting the game would be. Now you have to use your imagination. Now student two writes a verb, a simple form, a past participle form, depending on how much they need to, so depends again on you. But I would advise you to write maybe using the um, tense, uh, specifically a tense. You can use the present perfect if you want to practice or the past simple, etc. And student three writes by a person or by an animal. For example, by Cinderella you have here on the screen. Uh, maybe something else can be added uh, in the garden or etc. So again, you teach the students or if you want to omit or if you don't want to omit this by word altogether. So the activity is extremely interesting. We can actually try and see how it would work and maybe you could use it in your classroom. So the idea is for us to have three piles. We have the pile of 
who or what and we have here if it were at the beginning the cat or you can have here um, the teacher or we have um, maybe the people all around the world as we are now very worried or we can have here the most amazing most amazing ladybug again so it all depends on the level of the students and what you want to practice so and more then you have to write the predicate so the verb and you can ask for example for them to write into the by using the present perfect passive voice so you have has been conquered or you can have it um, have you can, of course can have pro slash because we don't know if it is singular or plural um, have or has uh, been uh, purchased okay so we have have or has in car uh, has been encouraged and let's go to the other part so you can have by whom you can say by um, a scientist or you can have here um, maybe in the shadow of a tree if you don't want to use the by word or um, you can say here for example i don't know at uh, three o'clock in the morning and after that of course the students can make more because each of them has five or six or seven or whatever you make them you shuffle them a little bit you put them and then you make funny sentences for example, you have the teacher, you have a verb, a teacher has been purchased in the shadow of the tree. So it makes absolutely no sense, this sentence, but it's funny in a way. You can put them back or you can have another situation you have. The people all over the world have been conquered, have been conquered by a scientist. And you have here another sentence, which makes, in a way, some sense. And if you are to say, maybe the last one, to have the most amazing ladybug has been encouraged at 3 o'clock in the morning. So, of course, funny sentences can occur, but your students, by having fun, can also practice a lot of these uh, tenses, uh, present perfect in our case, in the passive voice. Next activity that we are going to do, it is called When I Was. And this is um, an activity that also is used for writing and for speaking. And it is used to um, practice more of the passive uh, forms, followed by infinitives, and to talk about uh, students' experiences of growing up. So before the class, we make a copy of the worksheet for each student. Uh, we cut off the grid. You're going to see how, what can, so this is the grid we have here this is the and we have here agreed so we cut and um, um, keep uh, for each group of four and uh, we cut the grid as indicated so we have here two now on the board we write down some of the verbs from the worksheet and model the target language so the first is we have to be really careful and to show the students how to complete the activity so for example we have in the first case when I was a child I was told um, to cook, to look both ways while crossing the road, for example. Or I was not told um, to take care of my pet. So we uh, draw students' attention to the target structure and we elicit different kinds of statements from the class based on our personal experiences of growing up. And we write them, of course, on the board so that we can actually be sure that the students are going to use the sentences correctly. Now we ask them uh, how they felt and whether they think that their parents were right or were not. And now you give them this worksheet that you see on the screen. Individually, students fill out the chart by writing 12 sentences about the sum. So when I was uh, when I was seven, I was told, when I was in, etc. So they complete all of the sentences. 
Then we divide the students into groups of four and give each group an envelope. So in this envelope, you actually have these words. So you have here um, A1, B2, and etc. You have these uh, words, so for A, B, C, and D. And each of the students first have to decide uh, who is A, who is B, who is C, and who is D. And then they write the names uh, next to the corresponding letters just below the charts. So here they write here the names A, B, C, and D. Now, the group then picks a slip from the envelope. So they pick one of these, so whatever it is, and then, then uh, the student um, picks it up. And then, for example, if the slip reads C11, so he has to read the sentence for C11. That contains this word forced to do something. Then others contribute with their own experiences using the same verb. And then finally, so they do A does the same. So has a slip of paper, reads the sentence, the rest complete. Afterwards, uh, we discuss all together if we think that the parents or the teachers were right, whether they would do the same with their children. So the students are also asked about this. You can have different examples. You have when I was a child, I was forced to eat vegetables. So now you, if the students, for example, are in the 12 form, you can ask them, would you do the same with your children if you now had this possibility so to would you force your children to eat your veg their vegetables or would you not um, and of course uh, this kind of activity would bring the students together and have some um, funny situations discussed and also practice a lot of uh, passive voice an assessment activity for the passive uh, voice usage would be of course a beating game if you want to practice it's a game very easily to be used you have a piece of paper where you have sentences that are uh, some of them are correct some of them are not and the student's task is to beat on the sentences they think that are correct and buy them that would take about 15 to 20 minutes so it's all up to you what you want to do but another activity that can be done is a Kahoot game which is an amazing activity to be played with your students so the game is played in the following way. So you have to go to your uh, a Kahoot, um, to log in into Kahoot site. And then you have here different kind of questions. Like for example, I have here for you ready 12 questions on the passive voice. And uh, we can play the game by uh, having the following. So you have here, you can play it classically or you can play it in a team mode. Um, we shall choose the simple one. So the idea here is that um, unfortunately we don't have any plays because if you were in the room you would play it, but you have this number to fill in uh, when you go to Kahoot IT and then we don't have any players, but um, this is why we cannot actually uh, start but this is the way to do it. So, um, to maybe so have, have it, the uh, game. And this is the pin that we have to put into the game and to write our name. So we have here passive voice, we have 12 questions. So our task is to look at the screen. We have the first one, it's queen, uh, quiz. Many people begin new projects in January. So new projects began in January or new projects are begun in January. My task now is to click one of the variants, either pink or the one that we have. So I would write new projects are begun in January and it is correct. So we go next. And of course, I am the only player. So definitely here I'm going to be the winner. Next we have here, you must wash that shirt for tonight's party. And the sentence would be, that shirt must be washed for tonight's party, that shirt must to be washed. So of course, the pink one is correct, so I go next. Next question. Mom is going to prepare food. And variants, food is going to be prepared or food is going to be prepared by mom. And we have let us make a mistake this game and now I can log in by introducing the code that is on the screen and I am the person that is going to play only just me so so you can see me already. So that was the Kahoot game. Of course, it's an interesting one to play and you should try and make one for your students to be able to play. So this would be our final activity for today. 
Thank you much for the attention and see you too at the next session.